Hey guys, I'm very excited about this video because I'm going to be teaching you how to count the number of visitors you've had on your website using the count API. This is my personal website and as you can see, I am using that kind of functionality here. Hey guys, before we get started, I want to mention that the count API documentation can be found at countapi.xyz. So in case you guys are interested in reading through that, you can go ahead and do that. But we are going to be covering most of this stuff in this tutorial. So if you don't like to read through documentation, don't worry, I got you covered. All right, so let's head over to our project. And I actually have created a cheat sheet for this tutorial. It has a total of six steps, but steps five and six are bonus i'm going to copy and paste this cheat sheet in the description that way you can just follow along all right so let's get started with step number one set up your html css and javascript and i have done that step already one thing that we do need to add though is this line of code inside of our html so let's just paste that in here and this is basically just saying this site has been visited, created a span with an idea of visits times. All right, so let's right click, open with live server to see what we have. And currently we only have this site has been visited and it does not display a number because we haven't created a key yet. All right, let's move on to step number two, create a namespace, All right? So we're gonna copy this let's go back to our browser let's open up a new tab and we're gonna paste that in here and notice where it says name of your website including the brackets we're gonna replace that with the name of our website so i'm gonna type in codefox.com if you don't have a website don't worry about it it could be anything that you want you could even type in codefox.com just like me. It's not going to get in the way of my accounts and I'll show you why in a moment. All right. And also you don't have to include www. You could just include the name and .com. That's going to be good enough. All right. So we're going to click enter and notice that it created the namespace codefox.com and it created a key that is associated with this namespace. So if you used codefox.com just like me, you're going to have a different key. So it's not going to get in the way of my accounts. All right. All right. So that's step number two. Step number three, add this script in the top of your index.html. Okay. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it up here. And notice that this has also a namespace here. So we're going to replace that, including the brackets with the name of our namespace, which mine is codefox.com. And it also has one for key. So let's go back to our browser. We're going to copy our key. You don't need the, the quotes, just copy the key and we're going to paste that there. All right. So that's step number three is done. All right. So add this function in your script.js file. All right. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it in here. So notice that this function is called website visits. Let's go back to our index.html. Let me show you some here. So notice that it says callback and it has the name of that function website visits. So what it's doing, it's grabbing the number of visits and it's returning it in this response. So we're grabbing the, the value here and we're displaying it in our visits ID here. So that's how it's going to display it. So that's pretty much it. So if we go back to our project here, Notice that when we click refresh, it's going to count the number of times. All right, now let's move on to the bonus steps. So step number five, reset the value of your key. So let's copy this and let's go back to our browser and let's open up a new tab. So if we want to reset the value of our key, all we have to do is replace this namespace with our namespace. So codefox.com for me we also have to include the key so we're going to copy the key from here and we're going to replace that and also one final thing so for value whatever you want most likely zero 
So you can replace your key with whatever you want. So I'm going to replace it with zero. Let's click enter and notice that the old value was 11 and now the value is zero. So it was 11. Now when I click refresh, it's going to be one because I clicked refresh, but you don't necessarily have to replace it with zero. It could be any number that you want. For example, I'm going to replace it with 420. So the old value was one. The new value is 420. Now, if we refresh this, it's going to say 421 times. All right, let's set this back to zero. All right, and that's how you reset the key. All right, the final bonus step, view the current value of your key. So let's copy this and let's go back to our browser, open up a new tab. And currently our site has been visited one time, right? Because we reset it. Let's refresh this a couple of times. All right, so it's 12. So let's say that we want to view how many times our site has been visited without actually having to go to our website. So we're going to replace namespace with our namespace. So codefox.com and also the key. So let's grab the key. And we're going to replace that. Let's click enter. And as you can see, it says the value is 12, which it is. So if we refresh this more times, let's run this again. And it's going to return the current value, which is 19. All right. So those are all the steps. And also, of course, you're going to close these and your key. Don't worry. It's always you're always going to be able to access it from your index.html because you have it here as well. All right. And there's one final thing that I want to mention and it's actually very important. So if we right click inspect and if we go over to head here, notice that anybody can see your namespace and also your key. So this means that anybody could reset your key to whatever they want to get around this. Let's go back to our cheat sheet. Step number two. So notice that step number two has this piece here and enable reset equals one. What this is doing is allowing us to reset the key. But if you do not include that, when you create your namespace, it's not going to allow anybody to reset your key, not even you. So that's how you would do it. So for now, you could just leave this while you test the API out so you can see how you can reset it using this here. But if you're using this in your website, then you're probably not going to want to use that option. That way, nobody could reset your key. All right. That's going to be it for this tutorial. Hope you guys learned a lot. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.